this skin. How do I know that this is skin from so far away? I see three layers already from far away. You can appreciate that. One is this very dark layer, this here. Then we have this whole pink layer. And here we have the third layer. So let me delineate it for you. Let's see. This one I would need to be more precise. But basically this dark thing, the whole pink thing, and this clear thing here. These are the layers of the skin that we can recognize from far away. So let me zoom in to tell you what these are. From the very top here, this is the epidermis. All this pink stuff all the way down, this is dermis. And the layer that we saw at the very bottom is not present in this section. So let us go back and see it in the other section. Here, this extends even deeper, but here you can see that we have these cells here that are have this very thin membrane. Somewhere you're going to see the nucleus, these guys. These are fat cells. And the layer, this whole layer here of those fat cells and some vessels, some blood. Here is a blood vessel. A vein. This is called hypodermis. We zoom out again. We have epidermis here, dermis here, and hypodermis here. What's inside all of these layers? Let's start with the epidermis. And we can already see that this is thin skin. How do I know that this is thin skin? In thin skin, this layer that actually is the very, the most superficial layer of the epidermis. Here's our epidermis, all this. This is called stratum corneum. It's thinner, this is thinner than the thickness of those cells that are viable. Why do I say viable? Because these flakes here, these pink flakes, this is keratin and they're non-viable anymore. They are basically dead. This is what is on top of your skin. Here are the living cells of the epidermis. And there are different layers here that can be named. Let's look at it. Actually, let's start from the bottom. The deepest layer, so like the first layer here of the epidermis, is called stratum basa. These cell lay, it's not that well visible here, but they lay so-called basement membrane. So let's say the line that I just drew is the basement membrane. This layer is just one cell deep, so we are only considering this, this first layer of cells, just the first one sitting here. This is the stratum basal, and, and it goes into infinity. Just above this layer, several cell layers deep, is so-called stratum spinosum. Why is it called stratum spinosum? Let's see if we can see the higher magnification. Maybe, yeah, this cell. If you look at this cell here, this one, it has like little tiny processes. So let me draw it for you. Let's make like an inset here. This is the nucleus of the cell. This is the cytoplasm. And it has like little tiny spines, spinous processes that connect it to the neighboring cells. So here, that's why it's called stratum. Spinos. If we are able to go even higher, we would see that these look like intercell bridges. Here is another cell like that. Here is another one. You see these tiny spines coming out of it. The next layer, this one here, where we still have nuclei, we have these cells are like have this dark cytoplasm and like little dots inside. These are the. This layer is called stratum granulosum because it has the granules so these are keratohyaline granules and let me find some good example for you you can appreciate them this cell here we can see them stratum granulosum and the flaky part we started with is called stratum corneum the cells in this layer don't have any nuclei anymore you can see that this is just this Pink keratin, no nuclei. Nuclei here in all these layers, but nothing here. Here we said we are in thin skin, 
So we will not see this layer, but in thick skin, there is one more layer called stratum lucidum that is seen between the stratum granulosum and stratum corneum. So we would have one, let's imagine that my line would be the one called stratum lucidum. Here we don't see it. It would be white or light because it shines. Lucidum means it shines, so it would be lighter. An interesting thing, the stratum basal that you can appreciate here, there is brown color here, brown pigment. Brown pigment is called melanin. This is melanin. This is what gets activated and comes to the surface when we tap them, when we send them. So that was the epidermis. What about the dermis? What do we have here? A bunch of pink lacy stuff, and this lacy stuff is called collagen. And we can distinguish two arrangements of this collagen. I think it's better visible on the upper part. This one here that's denser, it looks like paler pink, all this stuff. And the rest that looks a bit lacier, a little bit looser. So these two layers are called papillary layer and reticular layer. The papillary layer together with the epidermis creates the epidermis junction. And in this junction, both the epidermis and the dermis have these fingers, these coming into each other, holding each other together. So this is the dermal epidermal junction. And the protrusions on the dermal side are called dermal papilla. These, these things going to the inside of the papilla. And the ones on the epidermal side called epidermal ridges. And other than collagen in the dermis, we're going to have blood vessels. We're going to have nerve endings. So this is going to be a nerve ending. This is going to be a nerve ending. This is a blood vessel. You can see an erythrocytes, red blood cell inside, nerve ending, and other things that we're going to see can be hair follicle. This is a hair follicle. The hair is inside, and here around is the follicle. And we're going to see glands. This is a gland. How can you recognize it? It's This is cross-section of a duct, so it looks like a circle with a lumen. It has a hole inside. These are eccrine sweat glands and they produce sweat. They play a role in thermoregulation and in addition to eccrine sweat glands which are not associated with the hair follicles, we will also have apocrine sweat glands. Basically the difference between an eccrine sweat glands and an apocrine, eccrine is not associated with a hair follicle and apocrine is associated with a hair follicle. These eccrine sweat glands would also have something called myoepithelial cells, so muscle cells, these here around maybe, this very thin layer, that will squeeze this gland to get the sweat out towards the surface. This third layer, the hypodermis, is mostly fat and maybe some blood vessels as well. So that was skin. The slide was being viewed on the Path Presenter platform. So thank you very much, Path Presenter, for making this slide openly available. And if this was useful, hit a like, give this channel a subscribe, and look at the other histology videos on the Easy Histology playlist. And I talk to you in the next video.